All right, guys, what we're down to is we've got everything removed. I'm going to give it one last check, and then we're going to talk about a couple of things of some evidence we want to grab right now before we get it apart. One thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look down at this crankshaft, and when this is installed perfectly centered in the cases, you're going to have the same gap on either side of the flywheels here. And notice here that our, we're actually pulled a little bit more to the right. We want this to be centered. There's polar tools where we can actually pull this over to one side or another. We're, we're not quite square in there. Now we do have, I'm going to show you some tricks on reassembly to be able to make that happen. Uh, notice here that we had a, a reed intake motor. What do we notice about the piston now that we have it apart? It's also a piston port and a reed here. That's where we have that hole in there. We could disassemble the piston right now if we wanted to. We're not going to worry about it. We're worried about just splitting the cases and then uh, putting it back together. Now, you can assemble the crankshaft puller tool on the left or the right if ever possible. And I'm going to attempt, and hopefully this is going to be successful, I'm going to attempt to split the case from the right side here. We'll set the tool up and see what it looks like. The reason is, is I have a nice big place for this bolt to go into. Does that make sense? If I do it from the other side, what do I got to make sure and put on the crankshaft? The flywheel nut so that I don't split it. But I'm going to pick three different places. What I'm going to try and do is spread this out and I'm going to see. Now I can't reach that one, so I can grab onto here. I could grab onto here and I could grab onto here. I'm really not liking it so much. I think I'm going to have to go from the left here. Go ahead and flip it. I wish I had a factory. Look real quick. There's not a Kawasaki a KX manual up there, is there? Yes. Thanks. There's all service manuals on the side there. Now, if I take a look at what I have available over here, I have quite a nice Y pattern to grab onto, don't I? You wouldn't want to be near this, would you? What's that? You wouldn't want to be near that little... Yeah, we'd be better off to grab uh, like this. By the boxes. Okay. We're a little bit better off on this side. It won't reach. So you wouldn't even try hitting it with a hammer first to get it to try to spread? No, you can't. You, this has to be pressed with a tool. It absolutely 100% has to. So do me a favor. Let's uh, let's open this up. Let's find out what size this requires. It's a 24 millimeter. And what I'm gonna do? Because I'm about every year sick of doing this. You can write that on your uh, lab sheet. 24 millimeter. That's what size socket to use the, for the tool. This thing's got tons of grease on it, so we're good. I'm going to go ahead and put the 24 millimeter socket on here for me. Well, the manual's going to specify which one. I'm going to use mechanical knowledge right now. Uh, because I don't get a very good Y pattern. The, the, actu the actual factory service manual is going to be great about... Where's our flywheel nut? Our flywheel nut's in uh, one of the bags. Okay. Who would it be, Travis? You were the bag boy then. Nope, that's a clutch basket. Here's our flywheel. Nope, that's a clutch basket. Before we do anything else, what I say we also want to get off. We're getting a little, I am getting a little bit ahead of myself here. So I'm going to get that keyway off and out of our way. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's not what I Look familiar from our other jobs that we did as far as the removal of that. Let's go ahead and stick that in there. Go ahead and put this in upside down. Flush. Grease on there. This is our new socket.
decided that we liked this pattern. We're going to try this. So now once we have an idea where we're going, we would take our bolts here. We also need the extensions on this one. So if we're going to go here. Now what you want to do on these three extensions is get those as far down as you can because we want to grab as much real estate of that bolt, don't we? So you go and just put that in a couple of threads, you're going to have a bad day too. You don't need to wrench them down there. Nope. No, we do not. Thanks for asking on that, but nope, we don't. So we're going to set our height. That's what all these washers are for. None of these washers come in the kit. You just go to your bomb guards or whatnot and get all of this. So I'm going to take and get an idea here of how many washers I would have to stack. Boy, we're really close on this back one. I don't know if that's going to work. What I can't do, see how I'm going to be cocked on that bolt? So I'm just plain not able to go. There's no way I can thread that bolt in. I can't go far enough without cocking the tool. So unfortunately, that's not going to work. But we can go, <coughs> we can go this back one, and we get a nice Y, don't we? And then it also, bless you, also moves you more towards the rear of the case. washers go on the other side. We might need shorter bolts or we're going to need more washers. The washers have to go on this side. We're just going to get it, you know, set up kind of close for now. Now the other thing is I can raise this to get me closer. Does that make sense? So a lot of times it just takes a couple times to set up because you only got one shot to do it. Everything has to be perfect and even. Are you with me on that? Okay, now since this one has less washers, it's the lowest one. I'm better off taking the big washer stack. Does that make sense? And moving it to this side. Let's see if I can get lucky here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get it close. And I got to, as I'm tightening this down, I want to make sure that I'm staying nice and level. Does that make sense? If I if I have this one, so, and you want to get as much threads as you can on these two. Does that make sense? That's why it just takes a couple of times. Just kind of back and forth. So as I get a good amount of thread on this, that gives me an idea of about how many washers I'm going to need for these other ones. That makes sense? Yes? Yes. All right. So there's my fine line. Now I can either just go grab a bunch of washers or I could try and flip these around and see if I can't get a little bit closer. Now what I might do is something like this, where this is the top one. So let's just get rid of all these but, uh, but a couple. Go back in. As far down as I can. You're all cocked to the back. You can cross thread it. Got a long ways to go here. Yeah. Still cocked. So you could use nuts in there too if you needed enough space, couldn't you? No, you don't need to. This is the way it works. Just use these washers and you'll see. I'm going to get this one all the way down since it's my top one. Get that as far as I can. Now, when I get this in place, Okay, this is going to help me. Once I think I'm straight, okay, I'm pretty straight there. Looks like I'm pretty good. Now I know how many washers I'm going to need to be able to make these happen. I'm definitely going to need some more washers. I can't go any smaller here. So, can you pause it? Okay, we're good and level now. What our big goal was is obviously to get all this level set, we're going to pull it nice and even. It even looks like we're a little bit cocked here now that I put a little tension on there. So I'll just grab my 12. I don't know if it's a, probably a 13. Loosen that up just a little bit. Let's see if that straightens up on me. Got a little bit straighter. So now I'm going to try just by hand first. It's going to get really tight. The one thing you guys have to know is that if we take a look at what our lab sheet here says, 
It says, uh, uh, which side did we install the tool? Can the, uh, can the separator tool be installed on the crankshaft with an oil jet on its end? I'm going to come back to that in a second. Um, what has to be done to threads? We've talked about that a million times. Once the tool's installed, uh, what must you do to the seam between the case shafts before uh, and during the separation process? So what I'm saying is, now that our tool's ready, what we have to do is take a rubber mallet, and the first thing I like to do is I smack back here by the swing arm pivot, because this is the most seized area. When you get this apart, we're going to anti-seize this up like crazy, but basically, do you hear how the uh, noise changed? The reason it changed is I have tension up on the on the front here. So that little, well, look what happened. It's normally not always this easy, but this one's been apart before. But if you look here, I'm, a, I'm split right here. I'm split along here. It comes down here, and then all of a sudden now I'm not split anymore. Can anybody tell me why? How about that one last bolt that's still in there? Go ahead and look at this. Go around here. You see, I still have a bolt in there. Didn't do your finger check? Did our finger check. Proved a point. Oh, oh that's right how this, there. You see how this split around here? Yeah. You left I, it in there on purpose? Yeah. Oh, that was a terrible Go ahead and look. I want you to look at the <laughs> gap. That one little whack with the screwdriver, see how far it popped up? The point of this is, is think about this, guys. If, I'm, if I only ever stand on one side of the motorcycle be or the bench while I'm working on something, am I going to get in trouble? You, you guys ever see me when I'm working? I'm all over the place. I'm doing this. I'm getting a flashlight out. I'm going long. Now, for, so for that first whack, this is tight right now. If we keep going on this, I guarantee we can break the case. I guarantee we are stronger than this. Because what are most mechanics going to do next? Ah, they're going to break something? So once again, you stop. You analyze the situation. You go around here. And, wow, I am not splitting right here. What's going on here? There's something up. As I go along here with my finger, I have a gap, I have, oh shoot, I got a bolt there. Make sense? So I can't stress that enough that you will break something. <coughs> What's that? I'm not sure where that baggie is right now. Be the left case bolts. We'll just, for right now, I'm just going to stick it in this tub right here so we see what we have going on. Now, uh, we loosen that to begin with. So do you see how the case popped on us? If you were having any kind of struggle, would this be your friend right now? Go ahead and get that hot. Get those cases working. As we go to separate this, when I had you guys pull the clutch cover, do you remember my tip that I said to actually push down, push down on the, on the Kickstarter gear? Do you remember that? You're going to do the same thing on this transmission here. So what I like to do is I like to give it a little tap as I'm going here. And then I'm going to see if this will keep going. Now, it's coming up nice and easy. So is now a good time to get my screwdriver in here? Where's my straight blade? Where's my straight blade? Screwdriver. Thank you. Is now a good time to get in here and start prying on stuff? Never. This is a machined case, okay? If you do that, if you have, if I have to do it anywhere on inside this entire case, do it back here by the swing arm pivot because it seals underneath it, okay? You'll see a second when we split it. But you really don't want to do that. You want to keep going around, if possible, here. You can get a breaker bar or something, and we're going to go ahead. I have to keep watching this piston. Notice how I make sure that I'm going nice and even. I want to push that, trans that transmission shaft down. Did you guys notice how it got tight? Yeah. Anybody see that? Because it's starting to stick back here. So what I need to do is I need to loosen that back up. Okay. And I'm going to start over again. Now, the other thing that's giving me grief right now, I remember earlier how I pulled that sprocket spacer off. I told you there was an O-ring underneath. That O-ring was still there, so it was causing me some grief. I'm going to go ahead and stick that. I actually showed you guys earlier that groove in the spacer, that's what that O-ring sits in. Okay? Go ahead and put that back. And I'm going to keep. Okay, I'm good enough now that I can remove the tool because before I can actually take this off, what do I have to take off the crankshaft? The nut. The nut. I could just leave these attached if I want.
lot of time when I installed this tool, didn't I? Do you think it helped? If you take and you just rush this, or you don't think about it, or you don't try and spread that Y pattern out as far as possible, are you going to get yourself into trouble? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get my nut off here now. Okay. And I'm going to, with both hands, I'm going to hold on to the crankshaft, and I'm going to hold on to the, the engine case. I'm still sticking a little. And what I got here is another O-ring. Now, I could tell. Do you guys always see how I quit? I do something, I'm not beating on stuff or fighting, I stop and I go, oh shoot, there's another O-ring. So this Kawasaki uses two O-rings. Anybody remember what this shaft is called? What attaches to this shaft? <clears throat> it's our counter shaft because our counter shaft sprocket attaches to it. That'll usually be a clue or an indication. Okay. So now with that O-ring out of the way, I'm going to just simply walk it off. comes off nice and easy. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. Make sense? And now we're ready to go ahead and remove the crankshaft and remove our transmission. At this point, our goal is just to get to this, this stopping point, and then we're going to uh, reassemble and uh, take a look at this. Now, here's, here's the thing that really sucks about this engine. is Do you guys remember that this was a... Uh, this was an engine that uh, ran. Oh, you know what? We're probably at a stopping point for this. Let me look at your lab sheet real quick. Uh, install the tool. Can you strike the tool? Why or why not on a two-stroke? Um, guys, when the case is installed in the, and obviously we're supporting the crankshaft by the bearings. Sometimes we uh, we we think that we need to beat on this thing with a hammer to uh, basically get that loose. We do not do that. Why do we not want to beat on this with a hammer? We can knock the flywheels out of church. So we want to use tools to press things apart and not big hammers. That makes sense? Okay. The other thing is a bit of caution, especially on the CRs. I know they're four strokes, but on your CR dirt bikes, when they have an oil pump and they're pressure fed, the reason I'm bringing this up now, even though we're in the two-stroke class, is that this... Um, this tool is the same one to press apart like your four strokes, your YZ 450s and, and everything else. In the end of the crankshaft is an oil jet. The outside case feeds oil through the center of that crankshaft, and there is a special tool required to go on the end of that. You have to make sure and use your case splitter from the other side. We'll try and pull up a microfish or a pitcher. I had a student that tried to use the wrong flywheel removal tool, and it wasn't even a case splitter. It was a flywheel removal tool, and he uh, ruined the crankshaft. So that was a very, very expensive uh, problem just for when he was supposed to be just pulling a flywheel off. Makes well, sense? Some of these have jets in here. Yep. And the, and Four strokes. Motors, it's it. a little tiny orifice. Yep. You'll know. You'll know right away. It's an orifice on there. <laughs> but that's more for just removing the flywheel. Okay. All right. We can go ahead and stop.